How's it going, people? Well, there's no drinks in this chapter, so I'll just have me one of these Humboldt Brown hemp, hemp Ale Humboldt Brown. I love it. <laughs> Had so much fun in the last chapter. Let's knock one more out tonight, and that'll be enough for me. Kind of made a mess of the last one, <laughs> but I don't want to do it over. I'd rather do another chapter. Well, where were we? 33, I believe. Oh, let's look at some uh, pictures. See? All that stuff in here. Guess what was happening in South America? Don't know what they were doing having a great battle in, uh, <laughs> in upstate New York if uh, all the action was happening in South America. Well, chapter 33 is not too long, so... Not as long as the last one, but the last one was a humdinger, wasn't it? All right. Alma discourse. Alma's discourse continued. True worship not confined to sanctuaries. The prophet Zenos and Zenoch again cited. Yeah, let's go. All right. Damn, that's nice. Now, after Alma had spoken these words, they sent forth unto him, desiring to know whether they should believe in one God, that they might obtain this fruit of which he had spoken, or how they should plant the seed, or the word of which he had spoken, which he said must be planted in their hearts, <laughs> or in what manner they should begin to exercise their faith. Two. And Alma said unto them, Behold, ye have said that ye could not worship your God, because ye are cast out of your synagogues. But behold, I say unto you, If ye suppose that ye cannot worship God, ye do greatly err. Yeah, get in your closet. <laughs> And ye ought to search the scriptures, if ye suppose that they have taught you this, ye do not understand them. Mm. Three. Do ye remember to have read what Zenos, the prophet of old, has said concerning prayer or worship. Well, let's see, there's a little footnote here, a little uh, uh, notation, and it leads us to 1 Nephi 19. Yeah, that's the only place you're going to find Zenos, is right back in this gold book. It's not in the Bible. I've got some good concordances, and I've I've read this book. I I don't remember Zenos. Or a Zenoch. Or a Zezrom. Or a Zoram. Or any of that. Four. For he said, Thou art merciful, O God. For thou hast heard my prayer. Even when I was in the wilderness, yea, thou wast merciful when I prayed concerning those who were my enemies, and he was praying for nice shit to happen to them, and thou didst turn them to me. 
5. Yea, O God, and thou wast merciful unto me when I did cry unto thee in my field, when I did cry unto thee in my prayer, and thou didst hear me. And again, O God, when I did turn to my house, thou didst hear me in my prayer. 7. And when I did turn unto my closet, yeah, get in there, <laughs> O Lord, and prayed unto thee, thou didst hear me. Yea, thou art merciful unto thy children when they cry unto thee to be heard of thee and not of men. And thou wilt hear them. Nine. Yea, O God, thou hast been merciful unto me and heard my cries in the midst of thy congregations. Ten. Yea, and thou hast also heard me when I have been cast out <laughs> and have been despised by mine enemies. Yea, thou didst hear my cries and wast angry with mine enemies. And thou didst visit them in thine anger with speedy destruction. Eleven. So he's not blessing his enemies or loving his enemies. He's praying for their destruction. That's at least sensible. Eleven. And thou didst hear me because of mine afflictions and my sincerity, and it is because of thy Son that thou hast been thus merciful unto me. Therefore I will cry unto thee in mine afflictions, for in thee is my joy. And thou hast turned thy judgments away from me because of thy son. Twelve. And now Alma said unto them, Do ye remember those scriptures which have been written by them of old? I don't remember that one. Ain't in the book. It ain't in the Bible. But it's somewhat paraphrased from many other parts, I'm sure. 13. Behold, I'm having a drink. Ugh. Oh, okay. Behold, if ye do remember that, those scriptures, uh, Ye must believe what Zeno said. You mean if you remember it, you have to believe it? For behold, he said, Thou hast turned away thy judgments because of thy son. Yeah, they said that in verse 11 also. Yeah. Uh, 14. Now, behold, my brethren... I would ask if ye have read the scriptures. For if ye have, how can ye disbelieve on the Son of God? 15. For it is not written that Zenos alone spoke of these things, but Zenoch also spake of these things. 16. For behold, he said, Thou art angry, O Lord, with these people, because they will not understand thy mercies which thou hast bestowed upon them because of thy Son. And now, my brethren, ye see that a second prophet 
that we've never heard of. <laughs> Who starts with a Z? Uh, of old has testified of the Son of God. Well, I mean, that's kind of thin still. Sorry. Need a sign. Need a miracle. Uh, and because the people would not understand his words, they stoned him to death. That's Zenoch? Not here. Eighteen. But behold, this is not all. These are not the only ones who have spoken concerning the Son of God. Nineteen. Behold, he was spoken of by Moses. Ugh. Yay. And behold, a type was raised up in the wilderness that whosoever would look upon it might live, and many did look and live. Yeah, that's Numbers 21.9. I know this one. I'm in Numbers 21, 20, uh, 21, 9. I have it underlined. <laughs> and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass. <laughs> that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And, um,. Yeah, 2 Kings 18, 4. Hezekiah turned around and destroyed that idol that Moses made. Yeah. Uh, he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto, uh, for unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. So, that's what they're talking about here? Something that was condemned by Hezekiah, the son of God? I mean, well, the Messiah, I mean. Huh. Hmm. This Hezekiah guy. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so they looked at this staff and they got bitten by those flying fiery serpents or whatever they didn't die all right 20 but few understood the meaning of those things <coughs> and these and, and this because of the hardness of their hearts but there were many who were so hardened that they would not look. Therefore they perished. So, they were so stubborn they wouldn't go take a look at this brass serpent staff thing. I mean, come on. I mean, Lot's wife couldn't resist looking. <laughs> they would have looked just to say, huh, oh, let's see what it looks like. Oh, shit, I'm healed. How about that? Yeah, no, I'm not going to look. Yeah, bullshit. Uh, I mean, they would have looked whether they believed in the magic or not. But maybe if they looked without believing in the magic, the force would not be with them. Yeah, they would not look, therefore they perished. Now, the reason they would not look is because they did not believe and uh, that it would heal them. But they wouldn't just look at it. Talk about stubborn. 21. Oh, my brethren, if ye could be healed by merely casting about your eyes, that ye might be healed, would ye not behold quickly? Or ye would rather harden your hearts in unbelief and be slothful, <laughs> that ye would not cast about your eyes, that ye might perish. 
I would go look at the damn brass snake staff just to look at it. Wouldn't necessarily believe in its magic. Just like I don't believe in this magic. 22. If so, woe shall come upon you. You might get a stiff neck. <laughs> <clears throat> but, if not so, then cast about your eyes and begin to believe in the Son of God. That's not the same thing. Looking and, and buying a bill of goods, two different things. <clears throat> that he will come to redeem his people, and that he shall suffer and die to atone for their sins. Uh, and that he shall rise again from the dead, which shall bring to pass the resurrection. I'll drink to that. Ah. That all men shall stand before him to be judged at the last and at the last and judgment day, according to their works. And now, my brethren, I desire that ye shall plant this word in your hearts. And as it beginneth to swell, even so nourish it by your faith and generous helping of bullshit. I mean fertilizer. Help the tree out. Your faith tree. And behold, it will become a tree springing up in you unto everlasting life. And then may God grant unto you that your burdens may be light through the joy of his Son. <clears throat> And even all this can ye do if ye will. Amen. And that's it for 33. So once again, uh, they're telling us that we have to decide to believe before we believe. So that's how you investigate this shit. You close your eyes and you bury your head as far up your ass as possible. And leave it there. <laughs> I guess. So you have to believe before you can believe. Makes perfect sense. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'll see you guys in 34. I'll probably do that uh, tomorrow or the next day. And I'm going to have to edit this mess because <laughs> it is a mess. <laughs>